it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You are blessed son. Stay blessed. John 17 verse 13. And now this is Jesus praying by the way. Jesus is praying, talking to his father. Um, he was shortly to depart to begin his passion, the activities that led him to the cross. And now he's praying, verse 13. And now come I to thee. Please listen. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 14. We'll run down till 21. I have given them thy word and the world had hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. This is a message on its own. We can dwell for weeks here just trying to unravel this mystery. This is Jesus praying. But that thou shouldest keep us them from evil. They are not of the world even as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world even so I also send them into the world and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they might also be sanctified through the truth 20 now listen neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their words say Jesus prayed for me or say Jesus prayed for me when he was praying this prayer he added you to the list. He said, I'm not just praying for these immediate disciples, but there are many who will receive and believe and come into the truth as a result of their word. 21 is my verse of emphasis. He says that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us. Why? To the end that the world may believe that thou sent me. Everybody say that they may be one. I'm really speaking passionately to the body of Christ tonight. And this concerns every one of us because we're a part of it. I want to challenge one of the things the Bible says the fivefold ministry was supposed to address. When you read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning from verse 10. The Bible says when he led captivity captive, he went down to hell and the Bible records that he gave gifts to men. Are we together now? He said he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all of that. And then he says he gave this fivefold for certain things. For the equipping, perfecting, maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? Kingdom advancement, right? Then it says that we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. So it is God's desire that such a thing will exist in the body of Christ called the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. The unity of the faith. A level of oneness in the spirit that the church will have one voice that when we speak 
creation, human beings, government, systems will acknowledge that which we are communicating because the church has come through the fivefold ministry to a point of alignment where our voice becomes one. Are we together now? One of the chiefest of all the arsenals of darkness in destroying the church is the proposition that 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 mindset that has been injected into the church that makes the pursuit of God look as though it was a personal revelation that was given to just a person as though God is not interested in the corporate growth of the body are we together now so we have individuals coming with revelations and that's supposed to be the program of God that's how it comes it comes through a person but it is for a people are we together now and this this strategy by darkness has destroyed the body of Christ because we have not been able to attain onto that point of unity maturity and perfection it's been a mighty tool that Satan has used and so in the next two or three weeks we are going to be examining the concept of, of uh, this statement that they may be one the concept of the unity of the faith but to start off tonight I want to um, take on you would call it a subtopic I call it three great errors three great errors I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Yes, we will forever sing your praise. Give us revelation tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 25. Let's start off from there. Three great errors that I believe has caused havoc in the body of Christ, has sabotaged the spiritual progress of many believers, many ministries, many well-meaning people who love the Lord and desire the pursuit of godliness. Exodus 25 and verse 40. This was the construction of the tabernacle media. You need to help us very, very fast um, today. Hallelujah. i like us to read together. One, to read. And look that thou make them after what? Their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. If you can have amplified, that would be great. Hallelujah. It says that you ensure that everything that is done to make up that temple is done according to pattern. Listen, when it comes to spiritual progress and spiritual advancement, the believer is not left to his options to guess his way and choose his method of spiritual growth and his method of understanding God. Are we together? That degree of autonomy is not given to the believer. There is a pattern. There is a pathway. There is a system with which God desires to be known. And you cannot create your own pathway to the knowledge of God. Several people have gotten into error in an attempt to create different pathways to accessing God, but there is a system. It's consistent with the character of God that every time God gives you an assignment or wants to show you a dimension of himself, he shows you how you will walk into it. In this instance, he revealed to Moses, I want to build a tabernacle, but there are specifics. It was on account of that that the hand of the Lord came upon Bezalel and released upon him the spirit of creativity and craftsmanship. And here God is giving a warning again. He's saying, make sure under no circumstance 
should you become emotional about this building of the temple do not get to a point where you pity the people so much that you say, no, no, no. Instead of using gold, gold is not available. It will take us a long time to go and, uh, and, and source for it and smelt the gold and all of that. Let's just manage this. God is saying, when it comes to this, you keep emotions and sentiments. There is a prescribed pathway. Are we together? It's amazing how many people attempts to cultivate formulas and methods and all kinds of ways that they believe will lead to Christ. That's why Jesus ended that confusion once and for all. He said, I am the way. I lead you to the truth and I give you life. Hallelujah. The concept of patterns is something that has intrigued me personally in my work with God ministries have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god families have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god listen everybody say spiritual patterns say it, spiritual patterns there is a prescribed formula for doing anything in this kingdom hallelujah there is a spiritual formula for being a father the only way you can become an effective father in the kingdom is to subscribe to that formula when you guess your own method it has severe side effects there is a pattern to become blessed and wealthy in the kingdom you guess your own pattern or listen to the garbages that are marketed around there will be a side effect let me tell you something you see the failure of governments across territories from nigeria to other parts of the country is a result of our guessing different pathways of managing the earth when god designed man he gave a pattern are we together now our refusal to pay attention to the patterns of god is what is responsible for many tragic events in families when you see a family for instance where it is the mother who is fending for the children and the father is there crossing his leg doing nothing for instance that is a violation of the patterns of god and the bible says whosoever breaks the hedge please pay attention the serpent is authorized to strike so your only basis of fortification in the kingdom is your subscription your alignment to divine patterns concerning every matter hallelujah now we live in a world there is no time in modern history where we have a beehive of arrogant people living and walking upon the face of the earth everyone with his own um self-exaltation we pride ourselves in intellectual accomplishments we pride ourselves in our social status and all kinds of things and these false accolades have brought us to a point where we believe we can be god outside of the christ you see let me tell you something when the new testament believer derives the relevance of his entire work in christ any activity at all you try to initiate that is outside of the authority the supervision and the jurisdiction of the christ is error is disalignment and is apostasy a deviation from god's patterns are we together now there is a pattern for everything in life when God anoints you and calls you into ministry, there is a pattern. When God anoints you and calls you into leadership, there is a pattern. Now the trouble there is, we receive the call and choose our pattern. Are we together now? Think how many times the people in the Bible refused to move until God told them how to do it. Moses is standing before the Red Sea and he knows the Red Sea can part. 
he knows there is a provision in the might of God to deal with that situation. Now Moses as a person did not know how it will happen. But one thing is that in the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom there is a provision for dealing with that predicament. Are we together now? And so Moses had to pay attention to stay with God and God spoke to him in Exodus 14. Tell the people to move forward. Stretch your rod. Patch that sea with it. When they got to Jordan, you would think it was the same instruction given to Moses. But Joshua had to wait to receive another pattern on how to part the same sea. You went for a meeting and the Lord told you, let everybody lift his hands. Then you go for another one and assume if God said everybody lift his hands, that's what he's saying now. And he said, everybody lift your hands. And nothing happens. And he said, Lord, what is this? And he says, I'm a God of patterns. Is God speaking to us? There were times when the nation of Israel were told to stand still. Don't do anything. God will fight for you. Hold your peace. There were times he said, prepare for war. You are going to fight. Patterns. Our inability to understand. Listen, please. I pray that God will open your eyes. This is not even where I'm going to. When the Bible says all things are possible. Let me explain to you what that means. In God's multifaceted wisdom, there is a solution for everything. Only if you can wait until you receive the blueprint for addressing that current condition. Are we together now? The Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns. How God approaches things in life. His methodology, his approach to the issues of life. God's pattern is that, listen, if you do not have love, for instance, even your faith works by love. That's God's pattern. God's pattern of prosperity is that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The world has their pattern. Cheat, loot, kill, hoard resources. Are we together now? The world prides itself in achievement. In the kingdom, it is God that gives men the power to get well. There are patterns. Our cultures have their patterns. For instance, they tell you when you get married, beat your wife in such a way that she will understand the possibilities that are in you. Then start treating her well. Are we together now? So that if at any point she wants to trivialize your masculinity, the memory of what had happened will put her into order. That's a world's pattern. But God says, uh -uh. wives submit. Husbands, love your wives. And he didn't leave you to love the way you like. He said, as Christ, love the church. Are we together now? Let me tell you something. Dear, our lives are largely a consistent activity of violating kingdom patterns consistently in God's kingdom if you want to be great you must be humble in the world system you try to like a political party you try to gather together loyalists who will exalt you but here's how we, are, we rise in the kingdom if I be lifted up not if you I will draw all men are we together now? Divine patterns. Let me show you one more scripture. And then we'll begin to talk about the errors. Ezekiel 43. When I found this, this was, this was powerful. I mean, it blessed me. Ezekiel 43 from verse 7 to 12. Ezekiel 43. Is God blessing us already? There are divine patterns. Ezekiel 43, 7 to 12. It says, And he the Lord said unto me, Son of man, listen. He said, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. He said, and my holy name, the house of Israel, shall be no more profane. Neither they nor their kings by their idolatrous halotry, nor by the dead bodies and monuments of their kings. Verse 8. 
nor by setting their threshold and so on and so forth let's go to nine listen he said now let them put away their idolatrous hollow tree and the dead bodies and monument of their kings far from me and i will dwell in their midst forever ten son of man listen he said show the temple by your description of it to the house of israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity. That they may see how much they have deviated from my ordinances and my patterns. He says, and let them measure accurately its appearance and plan. Next verse. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known unto them the form of the temple and the arrangement of it. This was a prophetic language. He's speaking prophecy here it exists and its entrance and the whole form of it and its ordinances and all its forms and all its laws and write it down in their sight so that they may keep the whole form of it and all the ordinances of it and do them he said look 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 these guys are guessing around they are guessing the reason why my presence is not made manifest is that there is a specific spiritual pattern like like an organogram that if done well will give me space to find expression when when balaam was called by balak to go and curse the nation of israel when he got to the mountain the bible says he saw that there was a spiritual formation are we together now the nation of israel were arranged according to their tribes with the ark of god being at the center that was a pattern that was given and he looked and he said ah these people are blessed i cannot curse them he tried to curse them but the dexterity of the pattern refused the curse from coming out are we together now he that breaks the hedge he that violates the patterns the serpent not may strike the serpent is waiting at the mercy of your alignment waiting for your disalignment to authorize his operations he said tell them i want you to give them the dimensions because you see a man when you read the new testament the bible tells us that we are we are temples temples and so in the similitude of this that was revealed to prophet ezekiel he's saying there are dimensions there are listen this spiritual alignment works like magic look at me please look at me i want to talk to you honestly brothers and sisters you may never know to what degree your alignment can authorize the activities of heaven around your life elijah the prophet understood divine patterns when it was time to call the presence of god he didn't roam around guessing his options. He said, bring me 12 stones. Because he was operating with the God of the covenant. Bring me 12 stones. Representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He put a sacrifice upon it. He said, bring me water. And there was blood upon it. And he called down the God of heaven. And God came instantly. Are we together now? The patterns of God. There has been largely a deviation from God's pattern. You see, when you look at a life that after prayer, after fasting, you lay hands on the person, four gallons of oil, and the person does not change, and there is no breakthrough. Let me tell you, among other reasons, that person, is in by default living in disalignment to the ordinances and the patterns of the kingdom let me tell you something please come you see ba if this guy has a spirit manipulating him whereas by default his heart is stayed on violating the truths and the principles of the kingdom no matter what kind of deliverance i do the devil will only be playing caricature and mockery are we together now because the devil knows that 
the edge is broken he can find expression we see this in the book of job satan came to job and found out that the hedge was closed and he went back to god and said allow me allow me to be able to penetrate and find expression so i can pray for this guy and lay hands on him are we together now but he will go back into consistently violating the patterns of god the pattern of god you see someone sent me a text thank you someone sent me a text today and said um he said i'm tired of my life i don't even know what is happening in our family man of god i believe one word from you would change our financial situation and i say it's not true no i wish listen i i can prophesy and it can bring breakthrough but that breakthrough is like pouring water in a basket there is a pattern that authorizes that breakthrough to leave the family are we together one they are not honoring the lord with their time no no no, no let's even leave honoring the lord with your time number one their hearts like the macedonians are not even with god it says they draw nigh to me with their mouths their lips but their hearts are far away from me are we together now tithing is zero even when it is zero even when it is there is a bribe they walk up to god with anger and resentment spend everything and calculate what they spent later on and now say i spent ten thousand okay god how much do i even have two thousand okay take one thousand this is your tithe that kind of attitude will keep that man in poverty and then to talk of other principles you do nothing you get nothing are we together that idea of something for nothing is an illusion it's nonsense so that man is violating this pattern and when he comes for miracle service in his mind he's thinking oh god let this guy call me and prophesy to me and say your level is changing and all through the preaching time he's impatient he's just waiting for where we we'll say rise up on your feet because to him he believes every other thing i'm saying is nonsense this man you are happy there's water in front of your table that's why you don't know what is wrong with me listen it is because of this that we have very little appetite to stay with the word and understand the principles of the spirit and one of the errors that is even coming to the body of Christ right now is the replacement supposedly to replace the word ministry with what we know as prayer ministry just follow me I have something for you tonight. are we together now and so it is good to pray but many people convince themselves and think because I am praying look I know so many ignorant prayer warriors who whose lives is not producing any result their frustration is to the roof because they want to replace one kingdom truth with another are we together now we just finished seven days prayer and fasting but there are there are patterns there are principles that you must learn listen please pay attention to what i'm saying if you are still guessing your life you are going to be in trouble please come here jimmy let me use two people benga come uh, who promise come let me just use these three people come sir now watch this these are great men of god these are three great mighty people listen if i give all of them a mic and i say in five minutes I, i'm not going to do that just an example i say edumi what is the key to the blessing in the kingdom maybe that's the question he has to ask you can you stand up and articulate the same way i look at you and i say how do you make jollof rice i have uh, get a pen and paper get one cup of water Go and buy this and that add onion don't put it too early do this and that all of those rules are we together now i come to benga and i say how is it is there a possibility that a man can walk in divine health oh yes the bible says it by his stripes we are healed are you living in it no that means something is wrong and the problem is never from god 
can he teach you and guide you as though giving you a formula are we together now number three i meet promise and i say promise can favor work in my life every day and every time is there such a reality in a man's work with god that based on an understanding and a, an anointing that comes upon your life you can walk in favor i can call one more person and say can you show us the path of advancement and progress in the spirit can you teach me what to do such that after 10 years i'm still moving forward regardless of what happens everyone say patterns please look at me brothers and sisters your spiritual growth is not all about getting revelations you do not understand it's about understanding the construction you have to know how the kingdom is built the systems of god's kingdom to master the laws with which you will use to command results in this territory otherwise no matter what else you do it's only a matter of time you'll be frustrated i guarantee you you can jump around and act like you are moving forward 10 years down the line because this is why you find out that so many people this guy starts well after three or five children he's angry he cannot remember the message he preached 10 years ago because he only prepared it for preaching he preached it powerfully but that truth has not been seated in him what do you know which pattern of the kingdom do you understand that brings you at peace with creation if somebody looks at you now and say mama i'm going to a herbalist tonight and i assure you you see this fowl that i'm holding in my hand is for you we are going to kill you this night I want to ask you a question, Koinonia. What will you do? I know what many of you will do. You will call me. Or you will call Benga or any of the leaders. <laughs> Apostle, somebody is, is daring. I'm a member of Koinonia. That's why you will stay first. You see, let me tell you. Look up, look up. Listen. If this is how it continues becoming, I'm not helping you. I'm only... It's like a musician coming for a show. That's what is happening. The goal of these teachings all the time is not to make you keep saying, my, this guy is an anointed man of God. No, there is something that is supposed to be transferred to you. Are we together? Like a button. At a point, you should be able to hold it. That which we have seen, that which we have heard, now you handle it and you can go places with it. I know it. I know how this thing works. Somebody looks at you and says, you are a failure. Continue praying in tongues. And you laugh and say, no, I'm not just a tongue talker. I know the patterns of God. I understand it. Listen, I don't care what you are doing that you are calling spiritual growth. If you are not understanding the patterns of the kingdom, the days that will come will frustrate your Christian experience. Look at what is happening, for instance, in the economy now. 1,200 naira or there about one gallon of oil. Now, now, the reality is that that's, that's very painful. But have you got the light that shines in the night? In the midst of this cry, some people have never had it this good. What is responsible for it? Are we together? There seems to be a time when a spirit comes upon the body of Christ and people start getting lukewarm and cold. Even preachers. I, sometimes I really find it funny. A man of God comes on stage and says, look, uh, we are going to just review what we have been teaching because he's stranded. He has not mastered the key to continuous growth in the spirit. And so he has exhausted every message. Four months into the year, he's tired. And then he comes and says, well, um, why are you looking at me like that? It's not like I didn't prepare. I've been busy. You think ministries? And then he starts venting his anger because he has gassed out. He does not know that there is a formula in the spirit 
that can keep men on fire 24 hours believe me when i say this that when people are drowning spiritually right a man who used to walk in miracles and power five years ago five years later is, is barely trying to pray for headache something happened his inability to understand how to sustain the anointing is drying him up are we together now please look at me what you do not know in the kingdom should be your pursuit at this point that's how to grow you don't just open your devotional and say today let me read second kings i've not read kings in a long time you are not growing you are convincing yourself that because others are seeing you read the bible then when you finish you just walk around pray for two hours in tongues just stroll around and ba -ba 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 -ba, one hour ba -ba -ba, two, two hours and you just say oh that's enough i'm growing you are not growing believe me you are not growing it's just religion because your life and the lack of spiritual evidence will show that there is no progress bless you guys please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord make my growth constructive pray inside and outside and all those following us online pray lord make my growth constructive i'm tired of comparing myself with people and convincing myself that i'm growing whereas i am not growing the difference between a general and one who just entered the army is is access to mysteries access to patterns he understands the art of war he knows what to do he knows how to put fear in his opponent and the enemy spiritual growth is not haphazard you can lay hold on eternal life you can lay hold on the precepts of the kingdom if that is not happening no matter how you convince yourself you are not growing listen please look at me to grow spiritually is not to know how to preach there are many people who have studied homiletics and they know nothing about spiritual growth to grow spiritually is not to get to the point where you can now start writing books look even an unbeliever is smart enough you can go online what does it take intellectually speaking to prepare a nice sermon if i tell you to preach on faith are you so daft that you cannot go and get messages of faith and listen to one and get some things and look at one or two scriptures remove some things you don't believe and just arrange it and come and stand and say okay we are preaching on faith and deliver an intelligent message and at the end somebody is saying this is amazing i've never had this i thought the greek word was pistis now you are bringing another word wow and then you leave with envelope and believe that that envelope is a sign it's an authorization that you are making progress then they will invite you for another meeting are we together you see how the deception grows they now say oh ebenezer please there's one small prayer meeting i don't know if you can just come and bless us you are the one who you believe you are growing so you are coming on let's all pray one hour two hours three hours you pray spiritually here and there they start calling you for little counseling and say i'm making progress believe me if those are the indices you are using for progress you know why i'm saying this a time will come your life will become clear that you are not growing and you have to find ways of explaining to people first and foremost why you are not growing to grow spiritually is not the ability to sing spiritual songs alone that's important that you stand on stage and raise a song a popular song that we know in the body of christ or writing songs no it's not a sign that you're spiritual your degree of alignment to patterns look at me brothers and sisters it is on the strength of that alignment you can look at people and stretch your hands and say my god bless you and that encounter will produce more results to them than long grammar of nonsense that cannot be proved everybody say i want results in my life please say it i want results in my life this is why regardless of how spiritual we think we are the people in our environment subconsciously they are not impressed 
and they are not convinced because it is barren of the ability to deliver. If your life is producing results, I assure you, your praying in tongues will not interrupt anybody. Nobody will say, yeah, stop shouting, Jare, it's too much. No, they are shouting because they are comparing that shout for three hours every day at the back of their window. Eight o'clock you are at it. Is it wrong? No. But that you are believing that just that in itself on its own, please believe me. You see, Ba, I may not I may not claim to understand certain aspects in the kingdom. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the operation of the kingdom, I know what I'm saying. There is a way a man walks with God that God will make your life a wonder. There is a way a man thinks he is walking with God and at the end it looks like God is a wicked God. I counsel people all the time. After years of spiritual activities, they return back with frustration and they say, Apostle, I can't understand. I'm the prayer leader in my group. I love God. Every time we organize crusades, maybe in a, a place, our village at the end of the year, I can't understand why is God this unfair to me? Is this, is this how my life will be? I will worship you forever, love you forever because this God is too good. I will worship you forever love you forever because this God is too good Lord. listen brothers and sisters hear me and believe me when I tell you God is a good God something about our not understanding his ways is responsible the inability to understand the patterns of God and you see that's why many pastors have to be careful a whole territory can be disaligned because of an ideology that comes from a pastor especially here in the north because we are very religious people we are sincere people who are religious so a pastor comes on stage and for 10 years he's teaching people something that is an error with such authority and audacity they give birth to their children and their grandchildren and they say this is the way and when the child is saying daddy i think is they say I will, I will slap you it's been this way have you gotten results through it? Don't question God. It's only God that knows what he's doing. Let's just keep on. No, no, no. Everybody shout no way. There is a way. Growing up, I saw many things. Well-meaning people who said all kinds of things about God. This is how we mock ourselves. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Everybody clap for Jesus. They clap, say, no, 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 this is not for my Jesus. And God is saying, do you really know me? All these things you are doing. Look how many frustrated people in the body of Christ. Look how many people are sick in the body of Christ. As if divine healing is a lie. That's why when you come and you are preaching and say there is a possibility in God to bring you healing, they are just watching you. It's when they hear somebody just shout, under the anointing, everybody say, ah, there's power in this place, so let's pay attention to what this person is saying. It's terrible. Look at what is happening to our families. Brothers and sisters, are you not concerned that our spirituality is not matching up with the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God as claimed by him himself? I tell you where the problem is. It's uncomfortably true but we must admit it. Our inability to understand his patterns. God is a loving God, but he's not an emotional God. If he were an emotional God, the cry of many people would bring them out of hell. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Yes, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I have watched the lives of people 
even in koinonia here i've watched the lives of people when they came for koinonia with their beliefs with their understandings about god and they chose to receive the word of god foolishly childlikely and watch what has happened in their lives hallelujah patterns let's go to three great errors i don't want to just dwell here but i mean i can stay here all night and challenge you i took a study towards the end of last year on god's generals afresh i've studied them so many times so many times but i took i took another study recently and it was as though i had never studied them i remember crying almost for two three hours in the night and say lord what nonsense is this how come we lost touch with spiritual reality no symbol to charge the atmosphere for them no worship song as we know dancing around but these people came with sincerity and they activated possibilities in the lives of people those guys had results hundred people could come sick and up to 95 can live healed verified not this our thing that we're not even sure whether we're here very sure that they are healed and the lord reiterated it to me again son i will not bend to your pattern it was when the prodigal son got up and said i will arise the father wanted him but the father would not just get up and roam around the son said, ah, ah, he thought to himself, I have disaligned out of pattern. When I was under the authority there, I lacked nothing. I wanted self-sufficiency. It drove me out into lack. Now I'm eating with pigs. Question, did his eating with pigs reduce the wealth of his father? Did any demon advise him? No. No. He said, I will arise. Let me tell you, some things are not demonic. It is within your power to be angry and say it must stop from today. I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the Bible says, afar off, while he was yet coming, the father saw him and ran to him and ran to him. I am passionate about seeking to understand the patterns of God. Our generation is not in ignorance. Technology has opened us up to a vast array of possibilities. I watch believers now and I'm telling you with all sincerity, the way many people are seeking God is not how I sought God. I sought God seriously. You don't even see anybody say, okay, let me get a concordance. They don't need it. I remember times when we'll sit down, we'll be asking questions. Ah, Jesus went to hell and preached a message. First Peter said so, and we're very fine. Right now, believers don't say, they sit down, gist and talk nonsense. Then when it's time for prayer, everybody say, let's pray. Begin to pray, everybody begin to move around. And we move around as if we're making a fool out of ourselves. Listen, let me talk to you. I have a responsibility to teach you truth. If I did not have the results in my life, you will say I'm deceiving you. Are we together now? Many people call upon God and it looks like he cannot answer. And then we keep creating theologies to explain this. Brothers and sisters, he can be heard. There is a disalignment. We need to return. So pastor said, God is not a God of crowd. He's a God of what then? God so loved the world, not God so loved Israel. God is not a God of crowd. I desire that no man perish. Prosperity is not the most important thing. All that is needed in your life, you don't need any anointing. Don't no nothing. No, the, the most important thing. If you have Jesus, you have everything. It looks like a very nice message. Believe it and see what it will do to you. It will destroy your life. That's what has happened. Let me tell you. Do you know any spiritual message can make you feel guilty? 
and so it is out of guilt you will believe it people just say i hope you know there's nothing in this life jesus is the way the truth and the life and you just feel guilty and say ah that book of financial intelligence i bought let me just throw it because the way this guy is talking three errors let me talk about it error number one that has ravaged the body of christ is the error of apostasy please write it down apostasy open up your spirit now the lord will bless you apostasy what is apostasy a departure from the known patterns of god a departure a derailing from the principles of god the name is apostasy two scriptures very quickly first timothy please chapter 4 verse 1 first timothy 4 verse 1 apostasy the first error in the body of christ is that we have a people who are hell-bent on teaching nonsense and rubbish without finding out if what they are communicating is in line with god's pattern it says but the holy spirit listen distinctively and expressly declares that what will happen in the latter times some will turn away not backslide turn away completely from the faith it says giving attention to what deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach who teaches it demons. there are doctrines in the body of christ that are doctrines of demons and when i say doctrines of demons don't just think the modern church ancient and modern all there are doctrines of demons that are older than us they subtly came they look spiritual satan always uses it is written apostasy a deviation from the truth listen please look up the first operation of demons in the life of a man is deception to cause a man to err to manipulate truth see deception does not have to be a lie a manipulated truth is also deception i can take truth out of his context and preach you see i've shared with us again and again that this bible is a prophetic book please listen to me brothers and sisters the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want to hear there are native doctors that when you enter their shrine, you see Bible. Does that mean they are of God? You know it's a native doctor. But you enter, you can see all other religious books. And then he adds the Bible. He can even say, let's, before I even pray, before we cut this chicken, turn to Psalm, Psalm 5. Now you are reading, listen, you are reading the Bible. I say, ah, Psalm 5, this guy, this guy is making sense. Ah, I'm, I did, say, ah, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, but my own is different apostasy a deviation from truth there are people who have prophesied things to people that did not come from god they had something but it was not the spirit of god and they misled people every manifestation of prophecy that is not in sync with the patterns of god is witchcraft whether the operator of it is aware or not the operator may be innocent but it does not justify the operation are we together now how many marriages have broken in the church because somebody got up and said ah um i don't know what is i'm seeing martha leave your husband because as i'm looking at you now i'm seeing that um there is a spirit and they we can't even tell you the name of the spirit the name of the spirit is a and b and c pastors have left wives People are beating people. Parents have disowned children. They have called innocent people, mommy water. If somebody who is in his right senses was born, he has birth certificate from the hospital. You now say the person came all the way from the river and all sorts of things. Now listen, I'm not laughing. I'm serious because I'm going to balance it. There are many people who have carried the illusion right now. They walk around saying I'm a witch. He said, who told you? He said, a man of God. That's why I came for miracle service. They said, I am a witch. 
the man of God has never paid attention to find out what the Bible calls a witch what is the condition from scripture to be called a witch or a wizard are we together now and this has misled people how about looking at a lady and vowing that you are going to marry a guy his name is Benga he likes keeping Malu he will sit down by your left if you don't marry this guy your life is finished and for 10 years that lady is roaming around Nigeria looking for Benga moving all around we've discussed this under challenging discussions on late marriage there is a balance to it because there are times that it is true see when truth notice when truth is manipulated it becomes witchcraft apostasy so many people have been confused today because of wrong teachings let me tell you other wrong teachings so you don't think that maybe i'm challenging people that rubbish demonic teaching that came from the pit of hell please look up came from the pit of hell that the anointing is not important the most important thing is that jesus is lord of your life and you are heaven bound that's a doctrine of demons it's popular it's taught by conservatives but it's still demonic money is the root of all evil doctrines of demons it came from the pit of hell by sincere people well-meaning don't confuse i'm not saying those who brought it are demonic it is devilish and it is terrible because men have absorbed it and it has produced nonsense in their lives other doctrines prayer is not important you hear people say that kind of thing prayer is not important they even laugh and mock and everything and you see some people pray bah, 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 and the congregation is laughing and demons are saying we like we like this congregation he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint another doctrine of demon once demons once you are praying and you don't have any business with the word just pray it's still the same thing are we together now there are all kinds of episodes of lies sugar-coated with a little truth here and there that is deceiving and misleading the body of christ apostasy a deviation from the truth men of god have advised themselves on different ways to raise money and run church projects some of these ways of raising money i, I say you know that i love the body of christ but i must say it we think it's nice we think it's marketable but some of these things were advices that were given by business people who received their inspiration on the seat of yoga it was under strong transcendental meditations they received some of this formula and then we watch their videos on youtube and say wow so this is how you raise money in the church and then you now come and we apply all kinds of things now the man may be genuinely anointed but there is a mix an aberration it's called apostasy a deviation from the truth some of us right now you have believed something that is not of god and that's what has authorized satan regardless of your prayer he still finds expression in your life there are people who believe you can have 10 girlfriends it doesn't matter the most important thing is marry one they even tell themselves it looks nice and they say man of god i have like 10 guys the last guy just came two weeks ago just can you help me which one do you think will be a nice guy because a doctrine was marketed to you are we together another the latest of the dangerous apostasies that are coming is an imbalance of the concept of fatherhood and mentorship that is bringing is making men in the body of christ demigods are we together now usurping authority not just spiritual guidance but literally holding the keys of the lives and destinies of other people the disadvantage being a cause or a threat and all sorts of things there is a place for that but i've always found that such imbalances that have destroyed the body of christ so we have offshoots of these kinds of things people who kneel down and hands up in church churches where they flog people oh you are not aware of it it has happened to some of you that's why you are quiet you are just looking because it has happened 
listen i don't say this in a cynical way i came with my heart to pour it out this apostasy jesus prayed a prayer he said that they may be one they will cut away from all these things and stand in a point of strength doctrines of devils right now there are all kinds of strange demonic ministerial associations are we together now if you want to rise you have to come into it's almost like a cabal like a cult you never rise until you subscribe to certain occultic things and at extreme levels at least it's not strange in the body of christ we know that there are all kinds of occultic societies how many men of god have been caught with drugs at airports customs grounded them right do you think the man of god started selling drugs like that he started innocently the first day he went on tv he paid almost one million he said ah there must be another way of raising money and somebody say continue going we, we are telling you this thing we know how it works and say together with your preaching you buy the shoe that has uh whatever you put cocaine if you ship that one successfully they transfer the money to your account who will know after all it's just your spirit that i say your your your, your body your spirit is going to heaven your body will be transformed all kinds of theology apostasy it may not concern you now but if you don't pay attention to it you'll be very surprised a man of god once said and i've shared it here how that he went to minister for one of his spiritual sons and after he finished the ministration he he saw the crowd within a year there were well over four thousand people and he looked at him he said ah, in this place four thousand he laughed and said daddy you think your oil what what you are releasing upon us and he said no he told him he said go out he sat down with his wife he said my daughter talked to me and she said i will tell you the truth sir he said they went to somebody true story a herbalist who gave them a mic you know most men of god we have our mics they gave him a mic but that mic they slaughtered a baby like these are little ones they slaughtered a baby with the physical blood they did some enchantments and gave the mic if you are passing that vicinity and your spirit is not at a particular frequency if you hear that sound you must meander to that church and go and sit down quietly are altar calls being done in that church you won't believe it <laughs> A miracles happening in that church you won't believe it you don't use altar calls and miracles just as a sign that things are okay the man may be sincere but he was desperate for power to an extent that you kill somebody's child one of the ladies here she's even here she sent me a text day before when were we talking about it yesterday or day before yesterday somebody came to steal a baby he stole the baby as he was going out with the baby the mother caught him and he dropped the baby and ran away the lady sent me a text it happened in zaria here do you know what people do for this anointing do you know what people do for power do you know what people do for jeep apostasy and people compare themselves with themselves i shared with you a story years ago about a man of God who had a particular oil that was given to him. You rub it when you enter the meeting, the dramatic manifestations of the spirit. And one day, you know, they were doing an early morning service. True story. And he's like assistant like this. Um, he didn't bath, you know, because he had to wake up in the morning, run to church, so maybe you just wash his face. And he, the man sent him to go and pick something in his room. And when he went, he saw the oil, you know, anointing oil, just a kind of, I thank God. Let me just rub this thing fast so that at least I can look nice. I can bath after the service. And the guy rubbed the oil. When that guy stepped into the church, I mean, there were all kinds of somersaults, and the Jew looked at him and called him. He said, What did you use? He said, I, I saw oil around your this thing and I rubbed it. He said, You rubbed that oil. May the Lord punish me as I stand before you and I'm lying. Or just giving you a story apostasy those who have completely deviated they are not of god or those who are of god but their doctrines are not of god a man can be of god 
but his doctrine is of another spirit. Are we together now? It's still apostasy. So there are those who, as people, are not, are not um, of God. There are not many of these kinds. Let's be honest. In Nigeria, popular to the stories, people say everybody, they are fake men of God everywhere. It's, it's not true. There are very few people, very few, and they are not even popular, who are fake. But a man can be of God, but his doctrine. There was a doctrine in the Bible called the doctrine of Balaam. Question, was Balaam a false prophet? So what, why, why was his doctrine being used to admonish the church? There was a doctrine called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. Now the Bible tells us about the doctrines of demons praise the lord apostasy wrong personalities bringing doctrines from the pit of hell specifically to mislead the body of christ or genuine personalities but not thorough spiritually and then bringing wrong doctrines and ministering it sincerely but is destroying the, the body of christ these two groups form the group that communicate apostasy a man can be genuine a man can be true but his doctrine may not be of god error number two in the body of christ that will stop the body of christ from coming into a place of unity until we work on it is the fear of confronting apostasy we have a group of people, a group of individuals, and a group of men of God who are less as fair and do not care about the general growth of the body. For as long as their individual ministry is doing well, let the body of Christ go places. Look up, please. These are the ones that do not have the courage to be controversial. These are the ones that do not have the courage to address a lot of things. Please look up. They are the kind of people who can see somebody like Sam being corrupted in his worship ministry and he's going down and they say, well, this is not my music director, so I don't care. They have the fear. They hate being controversial. They are the kind of men of God who always want a good name. They are the kinds of individuals. They, they don't want to be associated with any state. No, 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 no. Let it not be. Those kinds of people, because of that fear of walking in spiritual things and the fear of being spiritual have refused the power of God from finding expression. They are the type who don't want anybody to fall down in the church. No, no, no. no. We, don't, we don't want that kind of thing. Somebody starts prophesying, they go and throw him outside. I say, please keep him somewhere close to the toilet. Lock him there. We don't want any disturbance. That fear of being controversial. Are we together now? The second error that will stop the body of Christ. When you want to confront certain things, people say, what's your business? Just leave them. Let them do their thing. Shebiu, you are going to heaven. But how many other people are going to hell because of it? Are we together now? Listen, let me show you two scriptures that will bless you very quickly. Titus chapter 1 verse 10 to 13. This, this scripture is very instructive. Titus 1 verse 10 to 13. Let me tell you why many of the people, the believers and ministers in this group fear because of their, they are so conscious of their ego, their ministry and their reputation. There are so many men of God in Nigeria over conscious of their reputation to an extent that they would rather the body of Christ die than they stand strong to say, no, 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 but this requires adjustment. They can gossip about it in the secret. They can gather people together and castigate men in the secret. They can say all kinds of things in the secret, but none of them have the courage. They are the type that will see a sister and say, do you know that this sister is sleeping with every brother in this fellowship? And you are wondering, you are her pastor. What is wrong with calling her and saying, sister, I love you? They would never say it because they are ashamed of their controversy. They are the type that they say, ah, oh, promise in this, it's in the police station. They say, please, we have many members. This is just one of them. Let the police handle their work there. 
Because he said, um, if his pastor comes, he can talk to him. He said, please, I'm not a pastor of criminals. You see that? Overly conscious of their reputation. Let me tell you something. And I stand before the Lord of heaven to tell you this. If you have scars, I will get on my knees and I will clean that scars with you. Never will we leave our wounded soldiers simply because of reputation. I don't have one. I've been controversial from day one. There are husbands who will not identify with their wives. Two years, she's not giving birth. And somebody looks at her and starts singing a song. Why do we have two men in this place instead of a man and a wife? And the man starts distancing himself. The fear. Listen, if you want the body of Christ to become one, you must drop aside your ministry, your ego. Are we together now? Because you love the body. That's what Jesus did. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took on my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are from my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my hands to you in adoration. Listen, by the grace of God, there is nobody close to me who I will see derailing and I will be ashamed to hold his hands. We have stood by people in this place with all kinds of situations. I'm not, my idea of being a man of God is not gathering. That's why men of God do not have spiritual daughters and sons who are blind, lame. Those ones are not sons. The one who is a CEO. The lady who is drop dead beautiful, my daughter. The one who is, is, is God, God is helping them, all kinds of things. She's sick, they don't have money, it's depending on you. That one is a nuisance. The fear of being controversial, the fear of confronting apostasy. They sit down in a place, they are the people who can be outside, and somebody is making derogatory statements against a man of God because of a misconception. And they have the opportunity to say, ah, my brother, whatever it is that happens, you don't address this. They keep quiet. And the person who is talking is saying, I, I think you are aware. You know that a Jimmy is not serious with God. The guy will be nodding. But he's supposed to be a Jimmy's member. But he's nodding because of the fear of identifying. We have people in the body of Christ like that. Are we together now? They are ashamed of identifying with Christ. They are the type who will never put a gospel ringtone. They are the type who can never wear a shirt. Jesus saves. Ah, they are falling their hands. They are the types who can never say bless. They will say bless you when they come for koinonia. But they can do every other thing. Fear. Fear of my ego. Fear of my ego. Fear of my reputation. When they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus, that was what they thought he had. The fear. They thought he loved his ministry so much that Jesus would have nothing to do with a prostitute. And they dropped her before him and said, you claim to be holy. This lady, she's been caught in adultery. What do you recommend? And Jesus looked. And he says, you see all of you, whoever does not have sin among you, cast the first stone and she was shocked when he went to the Samaritan woman there was a time Jesus sat with prostitutes he was not preaching they were eating and people said this guy is a liar when Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box and was rubbing her hair on Jesus's feet people said that's it we've had enough of this this guy is is no you are not straight no way you know Mary Magdalene somewhere this is not the first time this is happening and watch this. Jesus never had any pressure to defend himself. I know what many of us will do. You go and say, look, I want you to know that 
I just looked at her. And it's not like that. I know she's somebody's wife now. What is the whole thing? Can't fear. Fear of evangelism. A guy loves you, but he's not sure you are a Christian. And God says, preach to him. And you say, ah, after this guy has written me all kinds of letters, I will lie now and start talking to him about Jesus and fall my hand and scatter everything and say I'm a church girl. The fear of being controversial. Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, hear me before men, whoever is ashamed of me before men. You look at a man of God, there is nothing around his life that lets you know he's a man of God. Hallelujah. People can come to your house and say, sorry, oh, bros, that I, I just held one bottle of Buddha. Let me just drink it very fast. I mean, I said, no problem, just sit down and relax. No opportunity to preach and talk to them about Jesus. It's not an issue. And they say, won't you take two? And then you just take one cup too and say, Lord, you know that it's just when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. This group of people are afraid of confronting truth. Listen, there are many pastors in many churches who have seen the truth, but they cannot speak. Are we together now? There are many pastors who know that it's in being filled with the Holy Spirit that you will step to the next level. They watch people go to hell and remain powerless, and they quickly come. That was what happened to a man called Nicodemus, John chapter 3. He had to come to Jesus by night. He was part of those who were shouting at Jesus in the day. You are this and that and that and that, but in his heart. So he came by night and this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no man, forget all that shout we are shouting in the day. We know the truth. Listen, how many people will insult koinonia, abuse koinonia in the day? And carry the miracle messages and just sneak and lay their hands where the growth is and say god whatever it is let just let let me there are many people i know who may not publicly stand to endorse what we represent but they have come to me in secret and say man of god pray for us sorry you know that it's just because of our environment the courage to be controversial those are the kinds of people who will blaze the revival. How many people can pray in tongues if their loved ones are around? The courage to be controversial. Titus 1. For there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle, vain, empty, and misleading talkers. Listen. And self-deceivers and deceivers of others. Listen. He said this is true. Especially of those of the circumcision party who have all of that. Verse 11. Listen. He said their mouths must not be stopped. For they are mentally distressing and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach. For the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain just stop there there are people like this and he's saying you are watching them he said they should not be allowed to do these things not by writing all kinds of nonsense propaganda but where god gives you an opportunity you can talk to them isaiah 5 verse 20 let's hurry up isaiah 5 verse 20 fear of confronting apostasy they will not speak so you don't know where they are standing because if they speak it may cost them money it may cost them support there are pastors who will never teach because they know the day they teach some truths members will leave and they will rather leave the members and teach error it's a dangerous thing brothers and sisters Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know those who do that? They are the ones who come and say, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You preach, I mean, it was powerful. Hey, Jimmy, I can't, I can't believe what you did. And they go back and say, what that guy is teaching? Say, lie.
they do not have the courage are we together now because of money because of fame there are men of God who are blossoming on TV stations because they were given conditions not to preach certain things not to say certain things and they said that's alright that's alright and it's growing right now the media is trying to strangle God out you are not allowed to say God again now there are technologies that mute those parts you watch it in films people are saying my God and my and you don't hear anything they removed it away but they can't allow any other curse word to be free because there are subliminal messages programming the mind of a generation to be depraved and to run away from God how many businessmen in Nigeria can go to their business circles and stand and say look we are business people but this is my pastor I am a Christian I love the Lord ah, I say you don't do that if you do that that's equivalent to one year's wages in jeopardy and so they don't mind behaving that they are not of Christ they don't care you are in a board meeting and people are saying this is what we are supposed to give the workers but we are going to chop this one just don't mind them all these poor people and you are there you just laugh when it backfires you say I didn't say anything but you watched it you would have enjoyed it if it came the Bible says they are the ones who call who is there any problem no 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 not, not at all it's alright the fear of being controversial that's what happens in Nigeria that's why we are suffering and having all the kinds of things we are having because there are men whose loyalty cannot be defined there's a man of God I love so much. Many of you know him. Pastor Tony Bakare. I love him very well because, not necessarily because I believe in all of his ideologies. I love him because he's a man who stands. I love people who you can define what they represent. Let me tell you, never be friends to somebody who is friends to everybody. He's a dangerous person. They cannot define their stand. You don't know what camp they are in. Today it looks like they are here. Tomorrow it looks like they are here. They can become anything as occasion serves them. They are dangerous people. Very dangerous people. Are we together now? There are so many people like that. There are people who come to church. They are nice in church. But you can, if you organize one party, they won't come in the, in the evening. When the light has gone down, they'll just run and say, I just came around. Before you do it, they start nodding to the music. last scripture Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 and 19 the second category of people who are causing error in the body of Christ those who fear confronting any deviation from the patterns of God because of what it will cost them Ezekiel 3 verse 18 and 19 listen if you say to the wicked if I say to the wicked you shall surely die and you do not give him warning are you hearing now or speak to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way to save his life he said the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require from your hand next verse yet if you warn the wicked man and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but you have delivered yourself there are many men of God who are holding in their hands people's reasons for going to hellfire and I assure you they will answer God the rich man is unfaithful to his wife you know it the rich man is into drugs you know it he carried 100 million from the drug money and brought it to your church and because you need the money you cannot sit down to say, sir, please hold your money. I'm more interested in your soul. Out of that one million, you have already calculated. Two jeeps, 10, 10 million, that's 20. Tight, 10 million. Instruments, speakers. I'll buy another RAV4 for my wife. You have calculated it. God is watching. The fear of being controversial. You can stand with one billion naira. I will tell you the truth. And tell you this is it this is not it number three 
Is God speaking to us? Ready for number three? The third reason or the third error is exaggerated confrontation of error. Hmm. Pay attention to what I'm about to teach. Exaggerated confrontation of error. This is the third kind of error. So the first is apostasy. The second is the error of silence and indifference. The third is the error of imbalance. Imbalance, misjudgment. This is where I'll dwell and then we'll pray. The third category of people, those who are cynical, wicked by default, who pride themselves at exposing and revealing the downfall of people, in a bid to prove that they are correcting, they find pleasure in revealing the flaws of the body of Christ. They are the type who will hold on to certain things in a person or in a ministry and stop people from receiving from God. Listen. There are many men of God today who preach against receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask them why. They will say, I went for a meeting. And I saw a man of God teaching people how to pray in tongues. Because of that singular mistake, they build a doctrine around it and use it as the basis for attacking anything that will become a blessing. Are we together? Because they had a story that a man of God was sleeping with another man's wife. They just say, all young men, especially when all these ones that wear suit, no tie, be careful. You see that? They say, I remember an incident. They pick on that one and build a doctrine out of it. It's called exaggerated confrontation of error. It would have been good if it were kept within the ambience of its relevance. But by default, they had always been intimidated. Listen, this group of people are those who never do anything serious. They are the ones who look for justifications. When people are praying, three hours eight hours and they are not praying they are the ones who are intimidated the day somebody from the prayer group falls sick they are the ones to let you know those prayer people somebody has fallen sick it's not all about prayer and they say i've been telling you so they they look for situations to justify their failures and their inability for making a mark i watched a video this afternoon that touched me it was a um Many of you know it, TEDx and all of that. So I was watching, I saw the name. It says, The Power of Shame. And I said, Wow, this is interesting. Let me. And then I clicked on it to listen to it, and it was Monica Lewinsky. Remember, uh, some of you were. It. Hallelujah. 1998. The saga between her and Bill Clinton. Right? had a scandal and you won't believe it Jimmy when I heard Molly Kalewinski talk for about 30 minutes I'm not an emotional person honestly especially when I'm under the anointing but I found myself fighting tears because popular to the stories they gave us popular to the way they lambasted that lady a 22 year old lady at that point you are the one who wants to sleep with our president and the, nobody heard her opinion they tore her into pieces and for about 10 or 20 years she could not come up in the open because of the shame and the degradation and when she was talking people were crying i said this reminds me of our world i can stand to preach and make a mistake in communicating something what i wanted to say did not leave to you the way it came those who sit in koinonia are already used to me making that kind of error say they understand what i would have said but somebody who has been looking for an occasion will say come and listen to this he will cut he will even thank god for i mean he will cut i said just listen to this line he said apostle joshua selman said the primary assignment of the holy spirit is to kill you now he didn't understand what i was saying he said can you see that and you are going to that kind of church <laughs>
They are the type who will say, ah, miracles are stage managed. And then the day somebody comes and says, I, I went to this ministry, let me tell you the truth. Kai, what I saw, I didn't like it. They said, you see, but they are always looking for an occasion to validate their weaknesses and their intimidation. So every time this, it seems like they are correcting the body of Christ, they are not correcting the body of Christ. They are venting a philosophy that will give them a breathing space. The goal of their correcting men of God or correcting doctrines is not to create order. The goal is to excuse their limitations. Is God speaking to us? Their confrontation is from the standpoint of jealousy. From the standpoint of envy. Bitter jealousy. The standpoint of envy. They use the truth to destroy. They use the truth to gratify the desires of the flesh. They are the type that will fight prosperity and will use one case study. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm sorry to say it and I say it with every sense of apology. I've heard of men of God who castigate ministers and talk about people maybe selling communion table. You know, there are churches that sell communion table, wristband, water, etc, etc. Now, there is an exaggeration to those things. But you do not throw the baby and the bad water. Thank God I'm not selling anything to you. But I've seen a lot of ministers, even communion, they criticize ministries and say people are selling blood. They are selling this. Ah, forget this. They are fathers of faith. What sort of nonsense is that? The people do not understand the mysteries. I've seen people insult God's servant Bishop Oye, David Oyeriko because of feet washing. You may not practice it. You may have reservations about that. But learn to respect people's dimensions and revelations. And even where you are addressing such issues for corrective purpose, it must come from a heart of love, not from a heart of bitter jealousy. There is a way I can talk about a man of God. You will know I have a personal vendetta. This is not about addressing an issue. This is a preconceived anger in me that has been seeking for a platform to find expression. Hear me? If you belong to that group, it must change tonight. Are we together? A lady who is feeling bad about herself has a very bad self-image and may not work on it. And all of a sudden, she may see a pretty lady and then see the lady dressed very nude and say, "Look at, look at what this. Look at all your Christian girls." The way she's is true that that lady is nude, but her addressing it is not because the lady is nude. She is angry at the beauty of the lady and the reaction it is creating to her awareness that she's not good enough. So she's using hammer to kill a fly. She keeps talking about it. I said, something pain me today. What is it? See the way this Christian girls dress. The, what they are trying to address is imbalance. Here men of God talk about miracles. They say, do you know that people stage manage miracles? There are people who do this. Yes. We know that there are people who do this, but are there people who teach the truth? Are there people who teach the truth? Every young man that is prosperous, oh, they are drug barons, they are this, this, they are 419, they are whatever. Don't mind them. How can a young man be so rich? Don't worry. I mean, life has time. Your limitation, what you believe, you transfer it to a congregation and keep people poor and keep people fighting everybody. Listen to me. Some of you subconsciously are partnering with the devil to destroy the body of Christ. I told you here, you never hear me open, open my mouth and talk about a man of God to condemn him. If I mention the name of a man of God, it's to honor him for something. I challenge wrong doctrines. I would challenge things that I feel need to be corrected. Are we together? But I will never tear down another man's ministry because I'm trying to show... You hear me say it again that all koinonia is doing is a contribution to the advancement of the kingdom. It will be fallacy for you to believe koinonia is the only ministry that is making impact. Thank God for the wonderful things he's doing through us. But I am aware, you are aware that all around the world there are men and women of God who love God with all their heart. Some of us will never receive blessings from somebody from a Catholic church because of your cynicism. Oh, Holy Mary, they do this and that and that and that and 
God brings somebody to your life who can bless you. But that stigma, because of the exaggerated confrontation of what you may consider to be imbalance, you have closed your hand. Somebody from another denomination cooks food for you. He says, God forbid me, I can't eat this. What has that got to do with the food? There are pastors who have propagated all kinds of messages. Once it is not your member with your church, having your wristband, or having the pastors, or, or all kinds of things, you fight everybody. Let me tell you, it is a lie from the pit of hell. Don't you let no man give you an impression like him or his ministry are the ultimate custodians of the activities of the spirit. It in itself is an error. Jesus said, I pray that they may be one. That's why you don't find anybody get up here and come and say, oh, the God of Koinonia. I don't have a problem with it, honestly. But I personally, for organizational purposes, no. We give the glory to God and it stops there. Are we together? Three great errors. The error of apostasy. The error of indifference. is more deceptive than apostasy because nobody knows where you stand. They don't know whether you speak in tongues or not. They are not sure. They don't know whether you believe in miracles or not. Please look at me. The second category. They are the type who can go to a herbalist and still come to a man of God. They don't care. Are we together now? Yeah. They are the types who, who will run and take drugs in the secret. Swallow Panadol, swallow Fancida and come up and say, look, in the last 10 years, God is my witness. Even, uh, even I don't even know how Panadol, what was even the name? As if they have forgotten Panadol. How old are you? You see, the second category. The day now they are sick and they have something like a growth that is obvious. They travel and don't come to church. The Lord asked me to preach this because it's very important. It's a message to us and it's a message to the body of Christ. Listen. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Two scriptures and then I tie it up and we'll pray. Galatians 6 verse 1. Brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, listen, he's teaching you how to confront error. There is a way to confront error. There is a way to confront sin. There is a way to confront mistakes. Are we together? There is a way to bring confrontation such that it ends up bringing healing and addition and multiplication to the body. He says, brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, he says, you who are spiritual, who are responsive, listen, to and controlled by the spirit, should set him right and restore and reinstate him, listen, without what? Any sense of superiority. And with all gentleness. Then he puts a disclaimer. Keeping an attentive eye on yourself. See that? Less you should be tempted to. Okay, the guy came to you and said, honestly, I love God, but last week, I found myself going to a herbalist place to collect a charm. I say, ah! Go and tell apostle. <laughs> it's not even me that will say this thing, but you see that? And before you know it, everybody in Zaria knows that promise went to collect a charm. You destroy his life. You destroy his ministry. And you say, I've always known. It's not today. There was a day the Holy Spirit was revealing to me, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for refusing to hear you. We, we pride ourselves. Listen, how many wounded soldiers I'm rounding up in the body of Christ. Do you know the greatest place where believers die is the church? I'm not justifying that people live lawless and just do all kinds of nonsense. Let a lady get pregnant in church and you hear what happens. Am I, am I endorsing it? No. Let a lady get pregnant. It's a believer who will come to you and say, have you had? Say, you mean you are here? Kai, you have eyes you can't see. Are we together now? 
a brother goes to ask a sister and she says no no i'm honestly i'm already engaged to somebody before you know it this brother says, i'm happy it's good for them blah 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 you carry and ship trouble it is only in the church where people destroy their wounded soldiers with joy may that never happen in koinonia in the name of jesus christ we have managed all kinds of cases in this ministry all kinds and god is my witness i love the people with all my heart and with all passion there are people who have come to meet me with charms this is what we're doing there are ladies who have gone to zaria city and come to say i don't say ah, no 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 with all the teaching I'm, no 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 you don't do that when a brother is caught or a sister you restore one are we together now if a man of god comes to how many men of god have come to me man of god i'm preaching but i'm caught up in masturbation or pornography i don't look and i say you of all people there's no such thing as that let me tell you there is no man who cannot fall we are all products of god's mercy i have learned this i know that if any man is standing he's only standing because of god's grace grace your grace lord i'm nothing without you grace your grace shines on me listen that's how we treat people all around you see a fellow believer belonging to a particular church you stand and laugh at them ah see this lady tying her hair in a certain way see this one cat walking and there are people who see certain ladies the lady is just wearing her trousers. i say look at it these are all the prostitute ladies moving all around what is is wrong is wrong that love is what we do not have that's why we don't see the power of god we pray we fast but we have no love he said there remained these three faith hope and love but the greatest of all is love there is no ministry I cannot preach in. There is no man of God I cannot talk to. No matter, I don't care who. I love the body of Christ. And I love the body of Christ passionately. Are we together now? Very important. There are books many of us would have read that would have blessed us. But because it was written by authors, our pastors have condemned. The Holy Spirit is nudging you. Read this book. There is lawlessness in your church. Read Papa Kubui's book, for instance. Maybe he wrote a book on holiness. And God is saying, read it. You need it. But I say, no, 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 no. The church I come from, we have all of this and you lose out. There was a time during my retreat, for one whole day, the Holy Spirit, well, it started in the night, but the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Papa Kumui's messages. Man, that thing flogged me from head to toe. Just the greeting. It wasn't even what he was addressing. There was a spirit that oozed out of him that I, I don't know how many things I repented from, from that night in morning. And it was good for me. See, brothers and sisters, you must love the body of Christ. We are all going to the same heaven. There is none that will be created for only you. I love the body of Christ. I never discriminate people. I can't see a lady now and say, Oh, you are this, you are this. No. See, if you are wounded and there's something wrong in your life, if you are looking for somebody to start you, you have found one. Me, Joshua Selma. I'm not afraid of being controversial. I'm not one of those cowards. One of our ladies years ago was pregnant out of wedlock. You remember her? This thing ruined the lady. It was Christians. I'm not justifying it. Brothers and sisters, how believers stab themselves. They messed up this lady's life. Almost destroyed her life. In an attempt to show that holiness pays. Yes, it does. But what do you do with a soldier who is wounded? Rebels don't come to God. They run away. When a man comes to God, no matter how wounded he is, he's not a rebel. Are we together now? Jesus said, he who does not have any sin, 
should cast the first stone. When you are pointing one hand at people, three fingers are pointing back at you. I remember that lady came, she found a home that time we used to meet in, in the campus there. Do you know a time would come whenever we are preaching, her baby would just be silent. When we get up and we start praying, she'll say her baby is kicking. She found love, found acceptance. I used to bless that lady with money every time. She was, because of the shame and the reproach that believers brought to her life, she said she wanted to defer. I said, you are not deferring. You must finish and I'm going to stand with you. I think a Jimmy is a witness and a few people here. I used to walk with that lady with her big stomach. I will walk with her in front of their hostel, Amina, and drop her there. Let anybody think what he wants to think. They say, the way this guy is being careful with this pregnancy, are you sure that whatever you want to think, think it? Are we together now? I will never forget. I, I was so passionate about her issue. The Lord revealed to me the day she would give birth. And I told her, I said, prepare on a Wednesday. You are going to give birth. That morning, she called in the morning. I was so happy as if it was my child. As she was giving birth, I was already appearing in Shika happily. When she gave birth, I said, I want the child. Where is the child? Are you the father? That's not the issue. I want the child. I held that child. Listen, I prophesied to that child from the depth of my heart. People were looking at me. That child's destiny, parents can choose to mess up, but children don't choose to come. Give them a right to enjoy a blessed life. Are we together? I have stood by people here in police stations. Oh, so, so person is in police station and he said they should talk to you. Oh, this, he said you are his pastor. He said you are this. I said, what's his name? I said, yes, I know him. Oh, this person did A and B. I said, I'm coming and I will go there. I will appear there. Ah, ah. Sorry, sir. Are you not the person calling on Yes, I'm the one. They are our wounded soldiers. But we'll hold them to a place of victory. Well, I'm not a coward. No. Listen, I'm encouraging you. This night, practice that ministry. Some of you need to go back to somebody and say, look, I left you the day I found out that you were drinking. But I'm back to tell you I love you. I see the way you are struggling to listen to koinonia messages. I see how sincerely you have a passion to get back. I'm here to help you. You do that, you will see the power of God in your life. I never, never have, never will condemn anybody. See, let me tell you, there is nobody God cannot change. Don't you sit down and say, me, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do this. Just keep quiet and say, Lord, I give you all the praise. During our counseling session, you see Muslims come people come Muslims because they know that I love them and I'm friendly I don't squeeze my face as if as if I'm the person who did this and say why are you here are you not no 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 everybody Jesus healed in the Bible was not born again but he still healed them I love them I play with their children I'm happy I have blessed the lives of people who today who have no business nothing in return for me please I'm teaching you something that will bless you there are people who cannot come for koinonia right now because of scars in their lives. And some of us are the ones who are helping to keep that scars. There are roommates who would have won to Jesus Christ. There are fathers and mothers who have done all kinds of things. But we are the ones who destroy them. Exaggerated confrontation. I even hear that in many churches, it's even an, a thing of embarrassment. They come and embarrass the people publicly. Embarrass the parents misquoting the scripture that says you should rebuke them publicly we don't even understand what god is saying whereas the person who is rebuking the guy for smoking has gold that hidden somewhere he turned it inside the cup and kept it in a fridge you would think he's zobo does zobo foam let's tell ourselves the truth and cry for the mercy of god let me tell you listen i have learned something by experience once you see somebody over talking about a little issue he's a victim of it he, that talk is to create a sense of justification believe what i'm telling you the day jesus christ will come 
you will be surprised to see those who are really close to him you will think it will be joshua selman with all my ministry regalia god will just go to somebody who you would have thought was an outcast because we who think we are great we are arrogant people and will not come to god but there are those who say lord in iniquity did my mother bless me from beginning i inherited it and i've worked in it have mercy upon me and god says these are the kinds of people who will find him every time i go to god i don't go with a sense of condemnation but brothers and sisters i go with a sense of gratitude ah because i know i know what the mercy of god has done in my life are we together the next time you turn and you see a lady pregnant don't start asking stupid questions you turn and see somebody ah he went for a party and they injured him and he's back to god answering altar call he said but bros now where did you go to that they hit you like this it's over learn to help people i'm not laughing three errors that are stopping the unity of the body i love people i love you whenever you see me rebuke you you know from the depth of your heart that it is out of love i can rebuke you but when you commit the offense, I will be there. I wrote a song years ago. The bandage is larger than the wound. I will sing it one day for you. I wrote that song to help hurting people. I'm concluding. Jesus gives a story of a Samaritan woman. Right? A, a, a good Samaritan. Somebody was beaten by armed robbers. Are we together? A religious person came and passed and looked at him, not wanting to be unclean, left. A pastor came and looked at him and saw it and said, no, 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 I'm holy, and left. But then another person came, a Samaritan, and got down on his knees and cleaned him. Whose wounds have you cleaned? See, the true picture of fatherhood is the ability to rebuke and yet cover the ability to rebuke and yet guide to tell you no 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 gulda is gulda it's not the way of god however there is a grace that can help you i am willing to help you i'll never forget years ago when a lady developed like a bipolar problem she was seeing things she was supposedly praying in tongues for two hours they took her to security office they called her pastor he kept giving all kinds of excuses and refused to come. The lady, I mean, she would literally fight with everybody. Ba, 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 praying supposedly overnight, like for two days, non-stop. I just, somebody, she doesn't even attend our meetings. Then somebody who used to attend the meeting called on me. I said, I'm coming. I was at the security office. I just got there and they said I should write a statement. I said, for what? I'm, allow me to find out what is going on first. I will take any embarrassment. If it is for you i will take any embarrassment if it's for the kingdom let me be controversial misunderstand me the most important thing is that no man will judge us on that day when we stand before him god will see let me tell you the day we stand before god you will be surprised to see the people who will enter heaven and you'll be surprised to see those who will be said depart from me ye workers of iniquity you will see somebody you have concluded upon who later, when you died, gave his life to Christ and God used him. Who would have said Saul will be the one to bless people? Who would have said so? Listen, live your life with eternity in view. Do not be afraid to stand for the kingdom. Do not be a man of values. When people are bleeding, be there. We are rounding up. God told me if we can address these three errors, there will be no reason for criticism again. There will be no reason for anything strange. There are people who wait for men of God to fall. That's why prayer department and the rest pray for. I mean, they are waiting. They are waiting somebody who does not know anything about finances goes to write an article about a pastor and says somebody gave him money what is your business if you don't understand kingdom finances 
you don't get up and now begin to talk and run your mouth and say all kinds of rubbish oh the tv ministry he is doing he is doing it out of this and that and that let somebody just appear now and just put a baby and say exposed joshua selman has a three-year-old this beautiful lady is his daughter and people say you know uh, my conscience the same you the same you who is looking at me right now the same you who is receiving miracles the same you who is a man of god with envelopes and kneeling down they were the same people who said crucify him please reduce it two keys let's sing one song and close this night there's a song in my spirit play 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 mike When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all will see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I have a version. When we all get to heaven, what a day of surprises that will be because you will see people you never felt will make heaven you see people who you look at them and think because they are controversial they are not of god you will see them stand at the gates of heaven and you will watch the way the gates will be shut against many who stand with their self-righteousness killing the body of christ Rejoiner, when you read his book, The Final Quest, it was a revelation of the operation of the body of Christ. Please read the book if you can get it. I read it years ago and it blessed me. And when he was shown the vision of the body of Christ, he saw so many people climbing a ladder and he saw others pulling them down. And they were Christians who were pulling their soldiers. He found out that whenever any believer had an issue, many people came and were stabbing him with a knife and they were all Christians. May it never be through your life that somebody will miss heaven because something about an exaggerated, I'm not teaching you to not confront error, but it in itself is an error to move beyond certain things and destroy a man's ministry. A prophet went to a church and saw by revelation that a man of God's wife was sleeping with somebody in the church. What will a wise prophet do? Will you not come down after the meeting, you call the woman and say, Mama, please don't be offended. This is what I saw. I can pray with you. I can help you. He just carried his big mouth and ran it in the church and saying, what I'm seeing is a surprise. Well, I did that, that, and that. Who is by the name ABC? People clap. Ah, Mama, you got it right. Who is by the name so so person? They clap. They say, Two of you, you know what you are doing. And he just tore that ministry into two. You think that's the will of God? Rise up, let's pray. Jesus prayed a prayer and said that they may be one. Three prayer points, according to the teaching, very quickly. And we're done lift your hands to heaven and thank him for this word the word will bless you in the day you need it this word came from the Lord for you and by extension for the body of Christ there are people listening to this message right now and he's healing them literally literally healing them give him thanks say father thank you for your word every moment in your presence is a time of transformation every time in your presence is a time of change you have given me wisdom you have given me grace first prayer point and i like you to pray seriously i like you to pray and say lord every revelation in my life that is an error that is already leading me the way of apostasy reveal it to me and bring me back on track lift your voice and pray please pray Make sure you are praying inside and all the overflows. Make sure you are praying. Everything I have held on to, everything I have held on to, capable of destroying me. The 
doctrines of demons doctrines of demons persuasions that look spiritual but are not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom open my eyes oh god open my eyes oh god so that i will not keep the body of christ in bondage doctrines that have kept the church poor doctrines that have kept the church conscious of demons and spirits as against the strength and the might of christ doctrines that have made the church powerless doctrines that have caused men to depend on the strength of the flesh as against the power of the cross lord take it away from my life bring me to the way everlasting hallelujah prayer point number two i like you to pray and say lord where i need to speak out for you i receive grace to not let my ego make me watch others in error go to hell when i can address it that 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 self-destructive attitude of keeping my ego and allowing somebody go to hell that state of indifference i don't want to be controversial so i rather allow people in their error than to stand and teach truth lift your voice and say help me help me help me give me grace and give me courage are you praying koinonia grace and courage grace and courage the bible says we all like sheep have turned astray every man has gone his own way grace 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 to draw people away from the gates of hell unashamedly regardless of the controversy that it will bring in your life regardless of how misunderstood you will be hallelujah before we take the third prayer point hold your hands together we're going to sing that song though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ though we many we are one body we are one body in Christ lift your voice and sing it one time I don't care whether you are Catholic Anglican Mountain of Fire Presbyterian Pentecostal we may differ in different things but it is very clear that the intention of the kingdom is that we may be one Body. We are one body in Christ. For the last time now, lift your voice and sing. Though we are many, yes, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Oh. I'd like you to pray and say lord put such love for the body of christ in me not love for koinonia love for the body of christ every denomination regardless of what i agree with or what i disagree with every denomination regardless of what i believe about their doctrines or not is too small a reason too small a reason to fight. Too small a reason to tear down people. Pray. Lord, I love your body. Every denomination, 
regardless of their errors regardless of the areas of imperfections they may have made mistakes they may hold on to ideologies i do not agree with but i love the body of christ i love the body of christ my god is not only the god of koinonia he's the god of the body and i'm telling you ministries may make mistakes we may all have our shortcomings but the church is marching on regardless of the mistakes regardless of the imperfections the church is marching on and the bible says that i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail hallelujah we are going to pray in one minute pray for every denomination every pastor and every wounded soldier in the body i like you to say lord i repent from adding to their pain it was with my mouth i spread the news that destroyed them lift your voice and pray lord i pray i pray the same mouth i want to use to prophesy and speak to destinies i have torn down pastors torn down churches torn down men of god destroyed wounded soldiers lift your voice and pray and say lord i repent in sackcloth and ashes i repent in sackcloth and ashes are you praying i love your body i will stand with those who are wounded i will stand with those who are abused like the good samaritan when others are condemning them and running away i will reach out with a helping hand i will stake my reputation to see people restored back Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. We're rounding up. If there is anyone here who has an issue that you think you are dying with and you need an ear to listen to, I want to tell you, trust us. You can trust this ministry to be able to help you without condemning you. Are we together now? Those who can help people in the body of Christ are rare. There are those who help, but when they help, they will be the same people to destroy you. I don't know how many people's issues are here every day. Sometimes the people are ashamed to open up because they are wondering when they open up. And then when they open up, I just look at them and I smile. And say, you don't know when I started hearing this kind of issue. Let me tell you, there is nothing the ears can hear that I've not heard. So while people are coming and opening up, they are saying, oh, man of God, I don't know how to start. I say, please, don't waste my time. I'm here to help you. And then, whenever they say what they think is the big issue, I just smile. And I say, there is a bomb in Gilead. And I can see the healing. I can see the refreshing. I want to live my life helping people up to love God and walk in the way of righteousness and in the power of the cross yes i will do it a thousand times i will do it please let me tell you i know that we don't have counseling sessions but feel free i will give you a listening ear and i will talk to you and i don't know matter what it is there is a way out don't ever let anybody conclude on you hallelujah I'm going to do an altar call our time is up but i want everybody to just stand in respect of this altar call two altar calls in one please no moving around inside and outside i'm going to make an altar call right now two categories of people just join quickly when i make the first group of people are those who have never seen a reason to place their trust in jesus and to give their hearts to him you may have been coming to churches or you may even have been coming out for altar calls, but the truth is you don't know what you are doing. You don't know the name of what you are doing. 
it's been destroying your life the lord has been telling you that jesus is the way listen please win this war tonight and say man of god you just preached a message that has blessed me you've walked in the greatest apostasy is the deviation from the love of christ the refusal to accept that love is apostasy indeed it will earn you misery in this life and eternal damnation in the life to come those category of people the second category of people listen are those who were once walking in the things of the lord but for some reason past habits past things things you thought you had overcome you didn't even know when they resurfaced in your life and you are dying slowly and you are saying i need to run to the lord it doesn't have to be anything immoral it could be anything anger you thought you had given it up now that god is lifting you you are already seeing it manifest full blue you have lost friends and you are wrong. you want to run to jesus please our time is up i'll just count one to five these two categories of people just run to jesus and begin to talk to him right now one two very fast don't wait for anybody to come you are the first there are so many people inside and outside make your way please very quickly celebrate them they are coming win that war in your heart run to jesus like your life depends on it because it does three my soul longs and even faints for you please keep coming tonight is a night of victory my heart and my flesh cries out for the living god for the living God, incline your ears, trembling and tears of morning to the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, longing for you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. Da, 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 da. Da, da, Lift your voice to Jesus and begin to talk to him. And say, Jesus, I come home genuinely. Please guide the children. Somebody should talk to them so that they know what we are doing and participate. Please talk talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart say Lord it's over I come to totally surrender everything to you and everyone in the congregation be praying for yourself because we all have something to pray about don't just stand watching them those in front talk to Jesus your maker some of you you've given your life to Christ but some of you are seeing things traces of things that you need urgent attention from the throne hallelujah listen please look at me there are many of you who are crying you see one of the things you find in koinonia we may not be perfect people but we are sincere people we will not withhold the truth from you but we will not use it to kill you there is everyone you see here had a time there are people who should be outside here but they are sitting there or you took the courage to come some of you are already filled with the holy spirit you love jesus but you are coming as a rededication to to give god space to deal with certain things i salute your courage there are people who are here for the first time you've been daily darling around the things of god but you're saying no i mean it seriously today hallelujah please i give you one minute if if the holy spirit is speaking to you to come and join them please come and join them quickly i want to pray for you our time is gone but i still sense this heaviness in my spirit that there are people who are supposed to come and join them there's no point being afraid we just preached about this there's no point going back to your home carrying the burden going back a sinner you know your name is not in the book of life if the trumpet sounds today you know heaven is not for you for sure there's no point sitting in the congregation brothers and sisters 
let's tell ourselves the truth and not play games with ourselves we're in the presence of the almighty god when you come before god you are serious the bible says let us lay aside every weight hallelujah please lift your hands in one minute all those in front some of you are crying i want you to know that jesus is in this place just for you and he's here to help you i will lead all of you through the same prayer although some of you have already made this prayer don't worry you can still just pray it with us say after me lord jesus you are the only one who can help me and save me i've tried my strength i've tried my intellect i've tried my strength but i've seen that it cannot help me i come to you tonight just as i am i surrender my life to you take my life and use it for your glory i receive eternal life say it into my spirit from tonight i'm a child of god the life of god is in me say this after me the voice of condemnation the voice of guilt the voice of accusation is hereby silenced by the blood of jesus i am a new person I am a changed person. Satan, take everything that belongs to you and live my life forever in the name of Jesus. My name is in the book of life. I have the assurance of salvation. Hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted and let me pray for you. Father, these ones have declared your lordship over their lives. I'm praying for those who are fighting habits and traits that are antichrist. The spirit that sponsors that operation lives their life forever. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for all of you under the sound of my voice. This is the beginning of a new day in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and a big congratulations. Clean your tears. Those of you who are crying. It's a new beginning. Hallelujah. Now listen. Please two things you will do for me very quickly. The Bible says, they that be planted, not they that visit the house of God. When you are planted in the house of God, is the place of your spiritual nourishment. So be planted in the house of God and watch God build you. Number two, um, there are people, there are ushers who will be waving their hands. I'd like you to politely follow them, be nice to them. They will have your details. The purpose is so that we can reach you, pray for you, and follow you up. Your life will never be the same. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye